To be powerful, you must be large, a large population, a large army, but we often forget more important qualities. To be powerful, you also need courage and resolve, qualities that Slovenia has aced. It's a country we rarely talk about, around three times smaller than Sri Lanka, two million citizens, a GDP of $52 billion, nothing extraordinary about those numbers. But what they lack in size, they make up in spirit. Slovenia is taking on China. They're challenging Beijing's gospel truth, their one China policy. Taiwan and Slovenia are in talks to set up a representative office. Many are calling it a de facto embassy. Another European state, Lithuania, did the same last year. Now Slovenia is following suit. And just to be clear, this is not official recognition. Slovenia's government is not recognizing Taiwan, but they do want a deeper relationship more trade, more, more cultural exchanges and more political synergy. Setting up an office is step one. Step two is lobbying for Taiwan. Slovenia's prime minister has criticized China's attempts to keep Taiwan out of the World Health Organization. He also backed Taiwan's right to choose its own path. Listen to what he said. We support the sovereign decision of the Taiwanese people. If they want to join China without any pressure, we will support it. But if the Taiwanese people want to live independently, we are here to support that position doesn't get clearer than that. Slovenia does not see Taiwan as a wayward province of China. It sees Taiwan as a sovereign country. As for Beijing, the prime minister had some tough words. Listen to this closely. It's difficult to listen to a capital with a one-party system lecturing about democracy and peace around the world. Well, someone had to say it. How is China responding to Slovenia's pivot? They have a twin strategy. The diplomats have one job, the state media has another. China's foreign ministry is calling these comments dangerous and shocking. It's a dangerous statement made by the Slovenian leader, Prime Minister Janis Jansha, that overtly challenges the one China principle and supports Taiwan independence. We are deeply shocked by this and strongly opposed to it. The state media's response was more colorful. They're not attacking the policy, they're attacking the man behind it, Slovenia's Prime Minister, Janez Jansha. Here's what the Global Times wrote, and I'm quoting, Jansha is a right-wing troublemaker who does not toe the line with the EU. Jansha's political image has shown that he is a fringe politician. He's playing the Taiwan card to cover his troubled resume. We call this a smear piece. If you cannot criticize the policy, criticize the person behind it. Low, even by China standards. Their desperation is understandable, though, because Slovenia is not an isolated case. Many Central and East European nations are now moving closer to Taiwan. Last month, Estonia, Lithuania and Latvia sent delegates to Taipei. They participated in Taiwan's open parliament forum. A few days later, a delegation from Slovakia also arrived. It was the highest level diplomatic visit since 2003. Beijing has clearly seen the bigger picture here. East and Central Europe may not break that one China policy, but they want closer cooperation with Taiwan. The question is why? Why is Eastern Europe picking Taiwan over China? We can think of two broad reasons. Number one is ideology. Eastern Europe is made up of former Soviet states. Estonia, Lithuania, Slovakia, Latvia. They were all part of the Soviet Union. Their politicians grew up fighting communist Russia. They know what it means to live under a one-party dictatorship. In other words, what Taiwan is experiencing today, these states experienced in the 1980s. Fighting communism is in their DNA. Reason number two, they can afford to antagonize China. These numbers should tell you why. From 2000 to 2019, China invested $129 billion in Europe. Out of this, only $10 billion went to Central and Eastern Europe. This pattern makes perfect sense. Western Europe is saddled with Chinese money, so they are hesitant to take on Beijing. But Eastern Europe has no such hamstrings. Take Slovakia, for instance. Only 1% of their GDP comes from Chinese investments. In Lithuania, only 1% of their trade is linked to China. On the other hand, Taiwan is an attractive partner. Countries like the Czech Republic and Lithuania are focusing on technology, 5G and semiconductors. And guess who's a world leader in modern tech? Taiwan. It's a perfect strategic match. Alone, these countries may not be able to challenge China, but put together, they are a big political and economic force. Plus, they're members of the European Union and NATO. So that's economy and strategy and military. Check. Everyone believed that Eastern Europe would roll the red carpet for China. They would be seduced by Chinese money. Turns out, 
the opposite is happening, Europe's big power should take lessons from these states. They've dismantled a communist empire before. Maybe they should take the lead again. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.